It's top three trail shoes of the year time, and I've tested out a lot of shoes this year from several different brands. Some really good, some not so good. So let's dive into the video and see which shoes have made our top three list. Welcome back folks, I'm Lloyd Purvis and you are watching Run For Adventure. Videos are coming thick and fast at the moment and we've got a lot to fit in as we build up to Christmas. Just the other day, we uploaded our top three road running shoes of the year. So I've left a link in the description if you haven't seen that video yet. But today it is trail running shoes. So let's get stuck into the video and see what's gonna come out on top in 2021. And let's start with number three spot. Up first is a trail shoe. I never thought would make it on our top three list of 2021 when we got sent a pair to test and review and it is Scott Running's Supertrack RC2. Now over the years I've run in several pairs of Scott trail shoes and if I'm honest I've never really got on with them. I've always found they're a little bit clunky, a bit bulky and a little bit uninspiring to be fair so I really didn't know what to expect from this. I must say I was pleasantly surprised and we picked up this pair right back at the beginning of the year in January where I was actually coming back from a pretty substantial ankle sprain. And I did most of my rehab mileage in the Supertrack RC2. It fit my foot shape really well. I got good levels of grip and traction from the outsole, but most importantly, I felt really dialed in and connected to the trails underfoot. And I'm sure a lot of you are aware when you're coming back from an ankle sprain, you're a trail runner. It's all about rebuilding strength and mobility into that ankle, but it's also about getting your confidence back. And I think that the Supertrack RC2 really helped me regain my confidence when I was getting back out on the trails. I wasn't blown away with the appearance. Um, if I'm brutally honest, I think it's a pretty dull looking shoe, but we all know I like a bold, colorful, bright running shoe. So I pushed that to one side, got running in it, and this is definitely substance over style. And I personally think that's always the best way around to have those two things. Weighing in at 270 grams, it felt pretty light and pretty responsive out on the trails. Having that Aero Foam Plus in the midsole offered a really good balance between sort of comfort, cushioning, and connection to the trails. Don't get me wrong, it's not a sort of deeply cushioned trail shoe that's set up to handle long sections of tarmac or long sections of compact trail, but it gives you just enough comfort, soak up a bit of road before or after or during your trail running, which most of us have to do. The upper fits my foot shape well and I feel really locked in and dialed into that midfoot. You've got quite a thin gusseted tongue in that upper, which sometimes has caused me issues in the past, but Scott have been clever enough to work in little zones of padding across that tongue where the laces pull across. So actually felt pretty good on top of the foot. It runs off a five mil offset, which is just right for me. I'm always at my happiest in say a four, five, six mil offset in my trail running shoes. So this was perfect. And another thing I really like, so it's got a nice rubberized sort of toe bumper just to give you a bit of protection from any trail debris. And that's always a feature I look for in my trail running shoes. But the standout feature of the Supertrack RC2 for me has to be this radical traction outsole. I'm always a big fan of when brands are doing things slightly differently to everyone else. They've put their own time and effort and development into something and it works really well. And this radical outsole is definitely one of those things. The rubber on that outsole I found really sticky. So great levels of grip on rock, whether it's wet or dry. And then you've got this very unique 360 degree sphere lug pattern. Great levels of traction on loose rock or in deep mud, which is quite a hard thing for a trail running shoe outsole to achieve. Like I said, it really did help uh, bring back my confidence coming back from that pretty bad ankle sprain. I never doubted the grip from this outsole once. So the Supertrack RC2, a shoe I never thought would be on our top three trail running shoes of 2021 list, but 
I'm really glad it is. Moving on to second place, and this is a shoe that I'm sure a lot of the followers and viewers of the channel are expecting to see in the top three, and it is Sokini's very consistent Peregrine 11. Uh, bizarrely enough, the last shoe, the RC2, uh, is the shoe that really helped me come back from that bad ankle injury, and this is the shoe that I actually sprayed my ankle in. Uh, I must add, nothing to do with the shoe. It was just a very silly and costly mistake on my behalf. I was literally running down the road, going to step up a curb, and I just wasn't paying attention. I was a massive fan of the previous version of this shoe, the Peregrine 10. I ran hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles on tough, challenging trail in the shoe. I kept going on and on and on about it on the channel, as I'm sure you're aware. So I was very happy when the 11s came out and we saw that there wasn't many changes made to the shoe. Uh, I have to say, I really enjoy the miles I run in the 11s, but I think I still did prefer the Peregrine 10. It just fitted my foot shape a bit better and I felt a bit more locked in and dialed into the upper. Getting out on the trails that I run, it can be quite hard for a shoe to be consistent. We've got lots of different underfoot conditions, especially as we push through the seasons. And this is why the Peregrine 11 has made it on our list in number two spot, because I love how consistent it is. Having that power run midsole with that power run plus top sole under the insole gives you that nice level of plushness close to the foot. Really good balance between comfort, but being really dialed in and connected to the trails. We've got to talk about the rock plate in that forefoot. One of the best plate protection systems in a trail running shoe I've ever had. Nice and flexible. It doesn't compromise the performance of that midsole. The only time you notice it is when you step on something sharp and it doesn't cause any damage under your foot. So I will say, it takes two or three runs just to bed that plate in, but once you've done that, you really don't notice it. The upper fits well. Like I said before, I think the Peregrine 10's fitted even better. Socony added some padding around the ankle collar and the heel cup and in the tongue of the shoe, and I think that affected uh, the lockdown on my foot shape a little bit, but it still fits pretty well. However, similar to the Supertrack RC, it is the outsole of the Peregrine 11, which is really hard to beat. You've got this aggressive five mil lug pattern so offering great levels of traction those lugs have been clad in power track rubber which is super super sticky and then you get great levels of durability so it is a win-win-win with this outsole i've never doubted it on anything wet boggy mud wet grass loose rock wet or dry rock it sticks and grips it all there's nothing worse than running in a trail shoe that isn't consistent when it comes to its level of grip and traction. You don't feel confident, you're always doubting that levels of grip, especially when your ankles are made out of glass like mine. <laughs> My ankles aren't really that, sorry ankles. The tagline of the Peregrine has always been a run anywhere shoe, and I think the Peregrine 10 and the Peregrine 11 can definitely achieve this. I've recently seen the updated Peregrine 12s, and there has been a lot of change made to this shoe. I don't know whether it's gonna be a good thing, but it looks and feels more like a sort of trail race shoe now than a shoe that can run anywhere. So gonna be very interested to see how that Peregrine 12 performs when it's released sometime around February next year. So the much loved and very consistent Peregrine has made our top three in second place, but it is time to announce the shoe taking top spot in 2021, and it is the deeply cushioned rockered trail running shoe from Salomon, the Ultra Glide. Over the years, I've run thousands of miles in Salomon trail running shoes, and I probably spent the first three years of my trail running just using that brand alone. And one of my all time favorite trail shoes was the original S Lab Ultra. And what a shoe that was. If Salomon re-released it, I'd buy a hundred pairs, so I'd never run out again. But if I'm honest, I did start to sort of move away from the brand because I just found their trail shoes were getting firmer and firmer and firmer when it came to midsole cushioning, when the industry was getting softer and softer and softer. So I got pretty excited when I heard about the Ultra Glides having that Salomon upper with that Sensi Fit technology that works so well for my foot shape, but getting that deeper, softer level of cushioning from the midsole using that new Surge compound. It was 
kind of all sounded like what I was looking for from the Salomon brand and I think it's what's been missing in their trail running shoe lineup. I'm happy to report that I am not disappointed and it is great being back in a really good fitting upper where I feel super connected to the shoe. When I put my foot in it, all I want to do is go and run on technical trails really fast. I think Salomon have got the balance of cushioning just right so it's soft enough to soak up those long miles even if you're crossing over to sort of hard compact trail or long sections of tarmac but it's not too soft that you lose too much connection or ground feel which can happen sometimes in deeply cushioned trail shoes. The rocker geometry in the midsole or should I say the reverse camber as Salomon call it I don't know what that's all about, but it's felt really efficient. The shoe feels nice and light, nimble and responsive when you're running in more technical areas. Uh, you haven't got the deepest of lug on the outsole, it's four mil in depth, but I haven't had any issues with traction or grip on any of the runs that I've taken the shoe on. Uh, I would say it might struggle a bit in the middle of winter, especially on the coast path in some really tricky, technical, boggy sections. And I'd probably switch back to my sort of Peregrine 11 for a really muddy, boggy run like that. Now, there was just one thing that I was a little bit disappointed about and that is the poorly designed pocket on the tongue for your speed lace. Can't really see how that made it through the manufacturing and design process because it really doesn't work and it can be a bit of a faff to get your laces tucked away. Uh, there's been lots of feedback about it, lots of people have said the same thing so I'm sure Salomon are listening and they'll address that when the shoe gets updated. Speaking of updates, I've seen some of the trail running and road running shoes that are going to be coming out from Salomon in 2022. Funnily enough, a lot of them have this deeply rockered cushioned midsole under them and a lot of them are using this surge compound as well after the success of the Ultra Glides. So there you have it, our top three trail running shoes for 2021 and the Salomon Ultra Glide takes top spot. When I was preparing this video, looking back at all the trail shoes that I sort of run and tested out this year, it hasn't been a really strong year for trail running shoes and I was a lot more excited when I was looking back at the road shoes that I've tested this year. But seeing some of them shoes coming out in 2022 from Ultra, Saucony, Salomon and lots of other brands, I think it's going to be a really strong year for trail running shoes. There's some really exciting shoes on the horizon. As far as shoes that almost made the list, Innovate's Trailfly Ultra G 300 Max, I still have to really concentrate to get the name right, has performed really well on all the runs. Um, I've really enjoyed running in the shoe, especially longer stuff. I wore it on the Southwest Traverse and it handled that challenge in 45 miles really, really well. I just wish it could be a bit lighter, get that weight down by 30 or 40 grams. And I think it might have taken number three spot away from the Supertrack RC. Also, I've grown to like the Endorphin Trail from Saucony. I know I gave it a hard time in that initial first impressions video because I was expecting something very, very different. But once I got my head around, it wasn't that type of shoe. I've actually enjoyed it. Yes, again, it is a bit heavy, but for those longer, slower runs when you're just plodding along trying to get the miles in, I've actually found it really comfortable and for a deeply cushioned trail shoe it feels really connected and stable underfoot. It would be great to get your feedback guys what trail shoes have really excited you this year and what trail shoes have left you a little bit disappointed let us know in the comments below and I don't want to sound like a broken record but have you entered our giveaway extravaganza yet? If the answer is no you have to go along and get entered guys. Just to make it nice and easy for you I've left a link in the description so click Click on that link, go and watch the video, follow the details and get in the mix. The brands have been so supportive this year. We've got about a thousand pounds worth of running goodies up for grabs. Uh, it's going to be open until the 23rd of December, so you haven't got long. And then we're going to draw out three very lucky winners in our Christmas Eve special. So go along, guys, get entered because you don't want to miss out. But for now, guys, thanks for watching. And if you've enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And don't forget to hit that bell icon as well so you'll be notified when we upload any new content. We'll be back here again very soon. But as always, stay safe and keep on running. Left a link in the description if you haven't seen that yet. But like I just said, today we are looking at trail running shoes. And today we're looking at trail running shoes. Trail running shoes. So easy to say.